Death Proof is a reinvented take on the slasher genre, directed by Quentin Tarantino. It was released as part of the Grindhouse double feature alongside Robert Rodriguez's Planet Terror. The film follows a group of girls who are stalked by the mysterious stuntman Mike, who kills people using his stunt car. The film stars Kurt Russell, Rosario Dawson, and Zoe Bell. Howdy folks, welcome back to Garage Slasherthon, where every day for the month of October we revisit a slasher movie. Death Proof is the movie we're talking about today. Which isn't a slasher movie in my mind, but it is in Tarantino's mind, and I wanted to kind of revisit this movie, so I figured why not use this marathon to revisit it. Tarantino's an interesting guy. A lot of people think he's a bit too style over substance, but I really like his sensibilities, and growing up, he was like the director where I first noticed what a director did because his style was so prevalent, and I'm sure that was the case for many more people. Which is why I wanted to revisit this movie, because I watched it maybe once or twice, and I never really cared for it, and I figured maybe if I watch it now I'll like it a bit more. Was that the case? Stay tuned. But anyway, I think Tarantino's an interesting guy. He's very passionate about cinema. He's a very romantic filmmaker, always paying tribute to the past, all the way up to his last movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But... I feel like Death Proof and Hateful Eight are probably the two movies that kind of broke Tarantino in a certain way because, like I said, he's very romantic. He really likes making homages to the 70s and 80s where he grew up in, and he tried bringing those sensibilities to a modern audience. The double feature with Death Proof and the uh, Village Roadshow with Hateful Eight and those are the two movies where audiences didn't respond to as much. I think Tarantino's really good at taking B movies that he grew up with and just elevating it to like an Oscar worthy stage. But Death Proof and Hateful Eight, I think personally, were a bit too gimmicky, whereas Tarantino views them as very integral tributes to cinema. So he's a very romantic person when it comes to that kind of thing. And I feel like when audiences didn't respond to Death Proof and then didn't respond to Hateful Eight. I think he was like, you know what? My signs of aging are starting to become apparent. Uh, I'm just going to cut it at 10 movies. I don't want to muddy my filmography. Which is a shame because besides those two movies, I would say I like every Tarantino movie. Kill Bill Volume 2 is a little iffy sometimes, but I love Inglorious Bastards. I love Django Unchained, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I still think he's got it. It's not like he should retire. But yeah, I think he just wants that perfect filmography. Anyway, this is definitely Tarantino's most foot-filled movie. If you like feet, watch Death Proof. You'll never see as much bare-naked lady feet than in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Death Proof, I wanted to revisit it, but it's definitely not aged that well, and I still think this is by far Tarantino's weakest movie. It's a shame because it really shows that his heart was in here, I just think his heart was in the wrong places. He was really interested in bringing back the classic car chase where there's real stunts and really people on the line here and you feel that the car chase at the end really is something like ugh. Oh and just simple moments where Kurt Russell's drifting the car. It really puts you on the edge of your seat. It's much more than any Fast and Furious movie does for me personally. That said, that's the element that Tarantino went into the movie wanting to do. And I feel like all the other things don't have as much thought put into it. It really is a more action-oriented movie. And the action is good. But everything surrounding the action, and there's a lot surrounding the action. As much as I love the action, it's not the majority of the runtime here. So uh, everything else kind of doesn't really interest me. I really like Kurt Russell's performance, though. That's the other thing I'll gravitate towards. The Kurt Russell performance in here is really good. <laughs> hey! <Woo> <laughs> hey! Ladies! 
was fun. <laughs> well, adios. Oh, fuck! Part of that is because Kurt Russell was such a good leading man in the John Carpenter movies he was in. And he's just a really good protagonist. And it's really interesting for once in this movie. And he's since played an antagonist. But just seeing him in this movie playing an antagonist and in one that's just batshit crazy, it really works. And he's older in this movie, but he still has that boyish Kurt Russell charm to a certain extent. You can see why girls kind of dig this guy. He's kind of mysterious, but kind of sexy and kind of stud-like. It's weird because the arc that... Stuntman Mike is kind of like Leonardo DiCaprio's character in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He was this guy who was really popular back in the 70s and his better days are starting to become behind him. But Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood wasn't a serial killer. Well, he was, but for the right reason. This was back in the days too where uh, Tarantino wants to be an actor. There's that moment where Tarantino fancied himself an actor and it's just off and I think this movie probably has the most off Tarantino acting. It just doesn't work in this movie unfortunately. It's really cringy. I love that philosophy. Warren says it, we do it. So let's do it. Yeah. What is it? Hey, shock first, questions later. Here we go, post time! Mm. What the fuck is it? I can see why someone would like this movie just as like that kind of retro feel but I approach this movie from a Tarantino movie and it just doesn't work on a Tarantino level just because the things that you go into a Tarantino movie expecting to be good is just not present here. The characters in here are just not memorable other than stuntman Mike that is. The girl characters are just not that interesting and kind of flat and Tarantino's usually good at writing really strong female characters. You think of The Bride, you think of the girls in Inglorious Bastards. Really good at writing female characters that are really badass and he really did push the envelope when it came to that but in Death Proof it's not apparent. These girls are just like talking like ditzy valley girls and it takes place in Austin, but you get the idea. It's just something is off with the characters and the dialogue is really off too. They like talk about boys and I get it. He's paying tribute to movies like Faster, Pussycat, Kill, Kill. That kind of car movie where it's like girls and I get what he's going for. But I think this is the one Tarantino movie where he didn't elevate the B-movie material. It's not like a Django Unchained where he took a black exploitation movie and took a spaghetti western and just elevated it to a new level where these are characters with depth. He didn't really do that with this movie. These characters talk a lot, but there's not much substance to it. And this is the one Tarantino movie where I feel like, yeah, the dialogue is just, it's not as punchy, it's not as crisp, it's not as fun to listen to these girls talk as it is listening to the opening scene of Reservoir Dogs where you're talking about Madonna. I much rather hang out with those people than hang out with the girls in this movie. And it's just because there's something missing there. It's not as interesting. A lot of the times these girls are telling stories and I'm like, that's not an interesting story. So she's got her camera and keeps saying, step back a little. So I do. Then a little further. So I step back a little further. Then a little more. So I do. Then I realize I'm right at the edge of a seven foot concrete ditch <laughs> with God knows how many rocks and broken bottles and rats in it. And if I fell on that fucking thing, I probably would have broken my fucking neck. I get it. Sometimes it pays off in the final act, but it's just the dialogue is really off in this movie. And I didn't find myself really interested in any of these characters. The movie also does the psycho twist where you're introduced to a bunch of protagonists and only to be destroyed and killed in the first act. And I don't think it's as effective in this movie as it was in a movie like Psycho. It's a really hard twist to pull off. And by the time you're introduced to your second group of girls, I feel like I don't know them as well. Part of it is because of the genre this movie is paying tribute to. When you watch those Grindhouse movies, the characters are very flat. They're very sexualized. They're not really full dimensional. 
but that's kind of not what I expect with a Tarantino movie. I want to see those elements brought to a different level, but unfortunately, this one just kind of falls short. And I'm not blaming Tarantino for it. I'm not like upset about it. This movie doesn't offend me. I think he just tried something new and it just didn't pay off. And I think a bit of his ego might have gotten in the way. At this point in Tarantino's career, he was invincible. He was coming off Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, and the Kill Bill movies. So he was bulletproof at this point and he just went guns a blazing and kind of missed the mark. But I feel like ever since this movie, that didn't happen again. Inglorious Bastards, Django Unchained, even Hateful Eight, even though I think it's a weaker Tarantino movie, I still think it's a solid movie. I think this kind of put his ego in check to a certain extent. The structure too is what I find off. It doesn't have like your three act structure. It's kind of just, here's a group of girls, they're talking, they get killed. Here's a second group of girls. They get chased by Stuntman and Mike. They win. It's a very simplistic structure that kind of just feels like a series of events rather than a complete through line throughout the film, which was kind of frustrating when watching over again. It's just like, now we're doing this and now it's this. Now we're doing this and now it's this. It feels very chart-like. It doesn't feel like a story. A lot of people prefer this movie over Planet Terror. And I think think they're two different movies when it comes to accurately portraying the grindhouse genre i feel like this is a more accurate representation of what those grindhouse movies are because there is so much dialogue in them and a lot of it is just crass i feel like this is more accurate to what grindhouse is that said in terms of making a modern grindhouse movie i always gravitate more towards planet terror and I think it's just a fun movie to watch. And I don't think it's something you'd see in the 1970s or the 1980s. But it feels more like what if they kept making this kind of movie up until the 2000s. So for that reason, I tend to prefer Planet Terror. But when I watch these movies together, there's really something different when you watch the two movies together versus just watching Death Proof like I did now. Because when you get that full experience, it feels a bit more satisfying. So yeah, the car stunts are definitely there. Kurt Russell is great. I feel like this was a kind of obstacle in Tarantino's career, a much needed one, just to keep his ego in check. And I think ever since then, he kind of realized that he's not invincible. That's how I feel about Death Proof. Is it a bad movie? No. It's fine. I really don't think I'm ever going to watch this movie again. I can just watch the car chases on YouTube and I'm happy with it, which I'm sure Tarantino is probably upset at the fact that I'm saying that. But yeah, just because of the structure, the weak characters, the weird acting choices by certain people like Tarantino, Eli Roth is in the movie, and I don't think any of the girls give a necessarily amazing performance. That's just how I feel about it. One thing I do find interesting is how this is a tribute to the 70s, but Tarantino still chose to make this a modern day movie. Even with the scratches, you still see t characters texting or uh, characters talking like it's the modern day. So it's weird that this movie takes place in the modern day, yet they still have that retro feel to it. But again, it goes with the theme of Stuntman Mike being this big glorious stuntman and his better days are behind him. So you can't really tell that story without it taking place in modern day. But when I first saw a character take out a cell phone, I was like, what? Anyway, that's how I feel about Death Proof. Do you like it? This is a very polarizing movie, so I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. Take care and I'll see you around. Planet Terror and Death Proof. Only at the Grindhouse.